Hey everyone, this is Vaishali Siddhapa and welcome to my channel Complemental Economics. And today's class, I'm starting with the macroeconomics fourth chapter, which is determination of income and employment. The topic which I'm going to discuss that is consumption function. So let's see what is a question. The question asks, briefly explain consumption function. And this is one of the four mark questions. Let's talk about consumption first. What exactly consumption is all about? The consumption means to survive, to fulfill your desires, to fulfill your needs. You're going to purchase few goods and services that activity called as consumption. The consumption, it is uh, so many determinants are there which provokes, which influence the, which influence the consumption. The same way, the most important determinant of consumption, it is household income. What is household income? Household income is our income, your income. Always, whatever goods and services you're going to consume, that means you're going to purchase, that is dependent on income. Don't you think that? Why few people purchase all goods and services? Because they have good income. The few people, they are not able to purchase the basic needs only. Why they are not able to purchase basic needs? Because their income is less. So, consumption is completely, yeah, majorly, very importantly dependent on income. So, that's why we say, uh, you know, income is completely one of the influencing part for the consumption. Next, the consumption the consumption function, we're going to talk about the relationship between consumption and income. What is the relationship between consumption and income? When income increases, consumption also increases. When income decreases, consumption also decreases, isn't it? So just, just go with a normal casual way how we deal. Uh, if just imagine this month my income is 300 rupees, it increased to 500 rupees. Don't you think I'm going to consume, I'm going to purchase more number of items, more number of goods? Yes, I will do. If my income decreases just because of the pandemic or some other reason, so many people income got reduced because of that the purchasing, their uh, consumption also got reduced. So this way, income and consumption, they have definitely a relationship between each other. It is completely positive. The consumption function can be classified into two different ways. One is autonomous consumption and the second one is induced consumption. Autonomous consumption and induced consumption. So each individual uh, types of it, we're going to discuss in the next slide. In this particular slide, you can see here we have autonomous consumption. First of all, let me talk about autonomous consumption, then we'll come to induced consumption. What is autonomous consumption? Autonomous consumption, we assume like that is constant. So in future, when I'll explain, I'll tell you why it is constant. Sometimes we do, uh, we see that few people, their income is very less. Otherwise, sometime we have seen, even we have seen that few people income is zero. Even though their income is zero, their consumption is not zero. The consumption still take place. For an example, just imagine my income is zero. If my income is zero, it doesn't mean that I'm not consuming anything. Definitely, I'm consuming a lot of things. So if I don't consume, that means how I'm going to survive. I have to consume food, I have to consume my basic needs. If I'm not going to consume, I cannot survive. So this way, if income is zero, definitely, even though your income is zero, consumption definitely take place. In this case, in the case of autonomous consumption, consumption is not dependent on income. Always just, you know, before uh, in the previous slide of mine, I told you uh, the consumption is completely dependent on income. Not always. The autonomous consumption is not dependent on income. If income is increasing, income is not, uh, if decreasing, income is not there. Few basic goods consumption definitely takes place. So that's why we say autonomous consumption is completely called as independent. Yeah, otherwise it is not dependent on income. 
that's why we call this as autonomous consumption now i hope you got to know why it is constant it is constant because it is not dependent on income uh, basic goods at any cost i'm going to purchase if income is increasing income is decreasing income is zero at any cost a few goods a few basket of items i'm going to purchase at any cost so that's why it is called as constant Combiningly, the con consumption function can be expressed like this: C is equal to C C is equal to C bar plus C into Y. So you can see we have used different C. It's C. It's consumption function. This is consumption function. C bar. It is autonomous fun consumption. C Y. It's a small C. You have to observe. It's a small C into Y. C Y. It is induced consumption. The second kind of a consumption which I'm going to talk in the future. That. Here you can see the last point says C bar is nothing but the autonomous function, autonomous consumption. I just told you this is autonomous consumption. So let's talk about induced consumption now. The induced consumption. it is completely dependent on income cy is nothing but the induced consumption the induced consumption that means the in, the consumption which is completely dependent on income that means if my income is increasing consumption will increase if income is decreasing consumption will decrease so that means consumption completely dependent on income so that's why we say it is dependence of consumption on income but in autonomous the consumption is not dependent it is constant if you have income if you do not have if it's zero the consumption is not dependent on income but in this case in induced income the consumption is completely dependent on income how are we going to measure this we going to measure this with the help of mpc what is mpc to understand induced income you have to understand mpc mpc means marginal propensity to consume that means when income increases consumption also increases so income usually not with the i we represent with the help of y that's the reason why you have y here y means income so i usually we use it for investment so that's the reason why in, in economics always one of the alphabet is representing one of the word so this way i is represented for we are representing for investment so why we are always used for income so in this way if income increases consumption also increases if income decreases consumption also decreases but do you think if income is increasing for 100 rupees do you think 100 rupees will be spent 100 rupees all will be spent for the consumption no sometime yes sometime no that will be measured with the help of mpc for this we have a formula last point you can see mpc is equal to change in c by change in y so this particular symbol we represent as a delta at the same time we call it as change you can see the last point mpc is equal to change in c divided by change in y is equal to small c small c is nothing but the induced consumption next point here just imagine to understand this you have to you have to come with one of the example let's see how you going to understand just imagine i have 100 rupees of income my income got increased for 100 rupees and i'm spending all my income 100 rupees got increased and i'm 100 rupees i'm spending for the consumption so that will be equal to 1 100 rupees i got 100 rupees i've spent my 100 rupees income got increased 100 rupees i've spent so maximum money what i can spend for the consumption that will be equal to 1 more than my income i cannot spend so the income how much i have if i'm spending equally to that so then that will be called as 1 so that means mpc is equal to 1 sometime the chances are there 
that MPC will be zero. How? If my income is increasing four hundred rupees, and I am spending, yeah, my consumption is still zero. My income is go, my income got increased hundred rupees, but still my consumption is zero. I am not spending at all. I am not ready to spend one single rupee in it. So that means MP MPC will be equal to zero. I am not spending at all. My income is increasing, but I am not spending anything. So the maximum number. Hundred rupees I have, I can spend hundred. That will be equal to one. So the maximum amount, the maximum value will be one. The minimum I'm not spending anything. So that will be zero. So that means MPC lies between zero to one. Here you can see the formula. C is equal to C bar. C is equal to C bar plus small C y. The same thing I have written here. C is equal to hundred. Autonomous consumption is hundred, which stays constant at rate. Even income is increasing or yeah, decreasing. If in income is zero, definitely my consumption will be fixed constant to hundred rupees. And zero point eight y. So for this, let me come with one story. Now. Just imagine, I got income increased for hundred rupees. My income got increased to hundred rupees, and I'm spending eighty rupees. Hundred rupees income got increased. I'm spending the consumption is for eighty rupees. So if my income is hundred rupees, I'm spending eighty rupees. So that means the value should be. Between zero to one, so that means the value will come zero point eight. If you go with the formula, the formula which I said MPC is equal to change in C divided by change in Y uh, into C. If you go with that, so you will get the MPC which is point eight. I have hundred rupees of income got increased in that the consumption is eighty rupees, so that means the induced consumption is point eight. Why? This is the way how induced income will be calculated. So this particular slide it's about graphical representation of consumption function. So now this is the x-axis. This is the y-axis. First, you have to construct x-axis and the y-axis. Then, let's construct now autonomous consumption. You can see now the red dotted line. What you have got, which is horizontal line parallel to x-axis. So that particular dotted line is nothing but. Autonomous consumption. Autonomous consumption is the straight horizontal line which is parallel to x-axis. Why it is straight line? Whenever you get the straight line, horizontal or yeah, vertical, that means that particular variable is moving constantly. So I told you, autonomous consumption it is constant. So it is not changing when income increases. It is not changing. It is fixed. It is constant. That is the reason why you have got this straight line, a dotted line. So next, let me construct induced consumption. So you can see the green line, which is induced consumption. My income is increasing. With that, the consumption is also increasing. So, if my income is decreasing, consumption will also decrease. So, you can see the positive curve. So, it is upward movement. Whenever any curve you have upward movement, so that means that is a positive in nature. That means income increases, consumption also increases. So, these all basic, uh, you know, the graphical representation I have already taught you in microeconomics first and second chapter itself. If you want to understand better why what is positive and negative, please watch my microeconomics explanation diagram explanation. So through that you will understand because I'm already done with the basic construction of the diagrams. So I don't want to explain now. If you are you have watched already watched those videos, so you will understand this better.
so the green line which ex expresses the uh, induced consumption which is continuously increasing with the increase in the income the dotted line which is a uh, red color in red color so that is constant horizontal straight line parallel to x axis it is parallel to x axis simple reason because it is constant in the nature this is induced consumption now you have c bar here the c bar which you can see this gap this gap is nothing but the c bar it is constant so it is also called as intercept of consumption function c bar this particular portion it will be called as intercept of consumption function so here you can see c here the c will be called as this this will be called as a slope of the function this is slope at the same time it is called as tan alpha so it is alpha symbol so this will be even called as a tan alpha this is a slope slope always expresses the relationship between the variables the two variables which i have discussed that is income and consumption in induced income induced consumption the relationship between the income and consumption it is positive the slope which it, it this is the c slope which expresses the positive relationship between consumption and income so hope you understood the consumption function it is for four marks for the karnataka pu board i hope you understood very well now so if you really like my videos please subscribe and share thank you so much